So, uh, unused Sonic music. Am I right, fellas? Fellettes? Fellems? I don't know, there's something fascinating and also unfathomable about creating absolute bangers only for them to not be used in the main game for one reason or another. Sometimes these are just the less good prototype of a pre-existing track. Maybe it's a song that was seemingly shafted for no reason? It might not even be a full song. Perhaps it's a little jingle and they couldn't find any place to put it. Yeah, pretty much every game in the series has them, even Rise of Lyric of all things, which comes as a shock because I could have sworn that didn't even have a soundtrack. Shadow the Hedgehog, I think, is the most interesting one of the bunch. Not only have some of the original renditions been out for quite some time, but as far as I know, this is the only Sonic game with unused vocal tracks. Crazy, right? And there's three of them. So with 2024 being Fearless, the year of Shadow, I thought this would be the perfect excuse to make a video talking about the unused slash beta slash cut slash prototype songs from Shadow the Hedgehog. There's a couple of obvious ones here that I'm sure you're expecting, but hopefully some of them are obscure enough that you learn something new. I also have an extra one at the end that's very, very much cheating, but I still really want to talk about it. Starting this whole thing off with what I think is the least interesting one, we have the beta music for System Select. You know, it's what plays when we navigate through all the menus. This version is basically the same as the one we've all heard. Uh, the main difference is that it lacks Jun Sonoe's guitar riff, so it comes off less hardcore than the final version. Uh, honestly, it actually kind of reminds me of the remix that we got in Sonic Forces. The main menu theme is also in a similar boat, although this time without the added guitar and drums, it sounds wildly different. It's not really empty, it's more... Uh, secluded and condensed? I think that's a good way to put it. Next on the list is the original version of Circus Park, which used to be much less in your face. Like, they actually made this sillier in the final release, which is a sentence I did not expect to say when talking about the Shadow the Hedgehog game. Uh, let me play you the opening for both versions so you know what I'm saying. Strangely enough, this one technically didn't go unused, as it's very briefly played during that damn fourth Chaos Emerald cutscene before getting interrupted by the Tails music. Where's that damn fourth Chaos Emerald? Isn't that... Tails? 
Another level with an altered theme was Digital Circuit. Again, just like the one from Circus Park, it originally sounded more low-key than what we got in the final release. Groovy, I think, is a good word to describe it. If you enjoyed that wonderful rendition of Digital Circuit, well, you're in luck! There's a third one. Yeah, in the soundtrack, we have the official version, the original version, and somewhere buried underneath that, we can find what's called the remix version. This time around, there's a much larger emphasis on the uh, digital part of Digital Circuit. Continuing on, this next one is about another level, but unlike the previous three stage renditions, where they were on the disc of the official soundtrack, so they've been known basically since the game first came out, uh, this one was actually discovered quite recently. On January 2nd, 2023, a prototype of the Xbox version for Shadow the Hedgehog was released on the internet, titled Beta 4. It dated all the way back to September 16th, 2005, just two months before the game was set to release. If you were to rip from those files, you can find things that you wouldn't be able to see when ripping from the official release. One such thing we can find is an early version of the Gun Fortress theme. What we got in the base game sounds like Secret Agent Elevator music. However, at one point, it was originally going to have a little more oomph, just slightly more energetic. Also, the beginning section rushes itself, and it just sounds wrong and awkward, uh, I'm kind of glad they changed it. Not only that, we could also listen to some of the beta versions of the vocal tracks, one of which being Waking Up, composed by the band Julian K. As much as I hate to disappoint, it's basically just the instrumental. Uh, the main difference I could hear is the part of the song where they use the drums to sound like gunshots, or at least that's what I think is happening. You know, the part that goes, tow, tow. It's noticeably less loud and more sharp in the Beta 4 build, if, if that makes sense. The Xbox prototype also contains the original rendition of All Hail Shadow, made by Magnify. Out of all the songs here, I think this one has the most drastic alterations. It's still done by the same band, and from what I could hear, the instrumentals were left untouched, but not only does the original voice sound noticeably different, but also large chunks of the lyrics have been heavily modified. Like, the first line of the first verse was a little too self-aware, like it was made specifically for a trailer.
as I stated before, Shadow the Hedgehog has three unused vocal songs, which is pretty wild. What's even more wild is Beta 4 actually uses one of those songs. Like, it's not just in the files, but it actually plays in the actual prototype. If you were to do a playthrough of a neutral hero route, like ending the campaign with the Black Doom fight on Cosmic Fall, we'll be able to hear that one song in the credits as it was originally intended, that song being Broken, composed by Sins of a Divine Mother. So, why did this not make the cut? To nutshell it the best I can, Jun Sonoe approached the band asking if Sega could use Broken in Shadow's game, but ultimately that plan didn't go through, strictly because they couldn't track down the singer, Wiley Beechler, so Sega legally could not use it for the final release. Then, two of Sin's members, the bassist Kyle Keterling and the producer Danny Parker, suggested they create a brand new song with the other band they were a part of, A2, nowadays known as Mona Lisa Overdrive. June said yes, and Broken was then replaced with Chosen One. There's an interview on this whole thing, I'll put the link in the description if you're interested in it. Believe it or not, the original plan was to use two songs from Sins of a Divine Mother, the other song being All of Me, not to be confused with the main theme, I Am All of Me. From what I've gathered, it's unknown exactly what endings this would've been used for, although if you ask me, I think this could've been used wherever Broken would've been used. It's got a similar somber feel with added flakes of edginess sprinkled in. Oh, that's why it was taken out. No, I'm kidding, I'm sure they could have found a decent way to censor it. Uh, the reason for it being cut is the same as Broken. It's a bit of a shame. Two songs, yet Sins of a Divine Mother never made it into the game. There's another band that kinda suffered a similar fate, Magnify. They were hired to create two original songs for Shadow, but when it came to signing the contract, Sega decided they only wanted to use one of those songs. What ended up making the cut was All Hail Shadow, being used for endings like the pure hero routes. The one that got the axe was Who I Am, which I'm kinda mad at because it really rocks and they should've used both. Many theorized that this was going to be either the main theme or the final boss music. I would personally go with the latter, as the lyrics more heavily imply Shadow is talking directly to Black Doom. And finally, the last song we're going to talk about doesn't really fit into the category of unused music, but it's literally the only time I'll ever get to mention it. So how many of y'all have seen the commercials for this game from other countries? Yeah, of course how they play it out is different, but after watching them consecutively, I can tell they all basically said the same thing, even if I didn't speak the language. Is Shadow good? Is Shadow bad? You can decide if you buy the game! Japan, however, is the only one that stands out. To help advertise the game, Sega collabed with a Japanese hip-hop group. M-Flow is their name. Ultimately, they decided to remix one of their more popular songs, Tripod Baby, and even went as far as remaking the Tripod Baby music video so Shadow could be in it. Now, granted, with the kind of game that Shadow is aiming to be, it's a little weird that the commercials in Japan are being more fun, especially with the silly CGI and the funky club music. That being said, is it good? Uh, here's the best way I can describe it. Men would watch a video like this and just say, hell yeah.
hell yeah. Welp, that is the last thing. If you stayed for this long, I really do appreciate it. You know, it lets me know that I'm making a good video. Uh, hope you have an astounding rest of your day, and uh, hope you're enjoying your year of shadow thus far. And now, the Patreon supporters, brought to you by Maud. Father of the Hamter and Page Fighting Master, so dark who fossil and triff. GN at Tim Arch Creek got lots of spaghetti and Tabitha Harvey Youssef. There's Augustus Renier, Stop Motion Stylish, Soma and Delta RT. Hey, come join the party. No, I don't I don't really like that. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>